Welcome to the Building It Online podcast, podcast all about the successes, learnings, and failures from building businesses online. I'm Bryce, this is my buddy Mike, and today we've got a really fun episode because my buddy Mike here started a super pack. Isn't that right, Mike? That is right, Bryce. So Mike started a super pack a couple of months ago, and uh, he's been using his online marketing chops to build a super pack and it's going pretty well. So today we're going to talk about, you know, what that looks like, why Mike has a super pack, what it is and, and how he's building that online. So Mike, you know, just diving right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what is a super pack for these people who, you know, for anyone who doesn't know what a super pack is, what's a super pack and why'd you start one? Absolutely. So a super PAC is a independent political action committee, which as of January 1st of this year, probably February 1st of 2019, I didn't know what that meant. Political action committee or a PAC is an organization that raises money privately to influence elections or legislation and mainly at the federal level. They typically fund presidential campaigns, fund congressional campaigns and big high level things like that. A super PAC is a relatively new type of organization to do similar initiatives, but not donate directly to that campaign. A good example is if I want to run ads towards a specific candidate, because my, my skill set is in ads. So if I want to run ads towards a specific candidate or towards a specific cause, I can create what's called a super PAC or a, a super political action committee, raise money towards that initiative, and then use that money to achieve the goals that we set for the, the, the pack. Sweet. And uh, was it very hard to start one? It was not at all. Um, being that I do own a, a business myself, it's very similar to setting up a business in that sense. So we did actually have to file paperwork for a corporation, and then you have to take that paperwork and file with the FEC, or the Federal Election Commission in the United States, and tell them what you're doing. So the only thing that we have to do differently than running a standard corporation is file uh, twice a year, telling them exactly where the money's going and where it's coming from. And then there's a few different uh, technical pieces where if people have donations over a certain amount, then you have to record different information from those individuals. But there's software online that helps you with that and it makes it really simple for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so um, is it just you or do you have some people? Is it you know, a couple people? Two buddies of mine that had a conversation around things that we were passionate about one day. We just started talking about green initiatives, similar to how you and I have, Bryce, and working with companies that are doing good things for the world. So we started talking about green initiatives and climate change and what the current political structure looked like and things like that. And we realized that we had a very similar interest on different sides of the, the coin, essentially. Um, I you know, am a much more technical numbers guy. One of the other guys that's in the committee is a very artsy, very uh, creative individual. And then the third person is uh, one of the best Facebook ad buyers that I've met. And all of us had the same passion towards bringing awareness to some of the things that were going on and some of the greed that was happening and what we saw. And what we realized was the Green New Deal was actually the center of the, the topics that we had been talking about without us really knowing it. So we started researching what the Green New Deal was. We started researching some of the initiatives that people were taking to help and to combat climate change, to combat deforestation, to combat all the plastic use to bring awareness to the use of fossil fuels and animal extinction, things like that. So the, the name of ours is the Green New Deal Alliance. And what we're trying to do is align, you know, hence the name, all of the people that are supporting those causes together and just be the connector. You know, we don't necessarily need to be uh, we're not selling things. We're not anything like that. We're just getting donations to essentially advertise towards these initiatives and bring awareness to the general population and give them a place to start a conversation and, and give them tools to go out in the world and actually make a difference and, and take actionable steps towards achieving something that right now is just a, you know, thought in the clouds idea that a lot of people can't tangibly reach. I think that's really cool, man. When I think about you know, really like 
collecting money and and putting it towards a good cause. I think of these nonprofits that are like very expensive to run. You've got offices, you've got overhead, you've got infrastructure. You're trying to hold, um, you know, charity events to get people to donate large amounts of money. But this sounds like, you know, three guys with their computers who are online raising money for a cause they believe in and then funding whatever they collect back into that cause. Is that pretty correct? That is 100% right. The coolest thing about how we've structured this is we are 100% centralized in a project management software in Google Docs. Um, and all three of us live in different locations. I'm currently sitting in Seattle, Washington. The uh, creative individual is sitting in San Francisco, California. And then the uh, ad buyer individual is down in San Diego, California. And we meet up once every three months basically just to sit down and chat, uh, have a little bit of face-to-face -face time. The rest of the time, we are just based online. I wonder how many other super PACs are completely remote. Like the all the 100% remote super PAC. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you guys do on like a day-to-day -day basis? What's the day-to-day -day of running a super PAC look like? So it's, it's tricky. Um, mostly what we do right now because of what our goals are and the, the direction that we want to go is create content. Uh, we have to have an absolutely insane amount of content live on the site every day in order to keep the uh, momentum going, to keep everybody energized, to keep the conversations happening. Uh, so that's our main focus right now. Secondary to that, we're running ads on that content. So we, we've taken the page from zero to just under 10,000 likes in 68 days. I think we have uh, 9,776 uh, page likes right now. And to get those, we have to continually post. And then to expand that reach, we're taking those posts and we're turning them to ads. So that's the biggest chunk of our time at this point. Once, or I guess twice a year, so we've done it once so far, but twice a year, we have to take a step back from the content and go back into filing paperwork and making sure that the treasurer of, of the organization, which is also me, uh, files everything according to the FEC guidelines. And that takes a, a day or two out of what we're doing every day. And then there's a lot of comment moderation, fueling, uh, fueling some of the conversations, making sure that there's content and resources, creating different PDFs for people to download and actionable steps for them to take, things like that. So, but it's all essentially around content generation. Okay. And when you say like the site, so is this a website you guys built? Is this all just on social media? So it's, we've, we've got a few different places online that we live. Our central hub is Facebook. Uh, we want everything to be centralized around Facebook just because it is so simple to use as a tool to organize everybody in one place. Uh, we do have a website, the Green New Deal Alliance org. We also have a Shopify site, shop.greennewdealalliance.org that pushes over to any merch that we might sell in the future. We've got a couple things on there right now, but not uh, that's, that's not our big focus. And then we've got our donation page right now. So there's three different domains that we own that are all linked through the website and everything that we do right now starts on Facebook. So they would go to Facebook, find the information. Sweet. So is this a Shopify store? Is this like print on demand stuff or what are you guys selling? It, it is. So we've got some tote bags. We've got some uh, t-shirts and we've got some hats on there right now. Um, the main one, I believe that's on the site, we've only got two different designs up right now, but the main one that's on there is a, uh, it's plastic in the ocean with a polar bear coming up with a stop sign just to stop uh, polluting, stop plastic production, things like that. We actually got that donated from a user that was like, it gave us some art and said, if you guys would like to do anything with this, you know, I'd love for you to have it, which was fantastic. Then we have another shirt that's green with white lettering and says, make America green again, because that's one of our initiatives. <laughs> so, Dude, I love it, man. Yeah. And how cool is it that this is all like a remote thing? Yeah. There's no warehouse full of inventory. There's no... Uh, people at the print shop, like holding all these shirts, it's just print on demand yep. through a Shopify store. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty cool. The, the technology that's available online to really run any type of business that you want from almost any location that you want is wild today. Yeah. I love it, man. I geek out about this stuff. 
Uh, so one more question for you. What are the online skills that you've developed, you know, over the last couple of years running your service-based business that you are using to really fuel this super pack that you have today? That's a good question. I have... I've started online. I remember the days where I was sitting on my dad's couch as a, a high school student telling myself that I needed to recreate one website because I thought that web design was going to be my future. And I didn't realize at the time where that was going to take me in life. But learning the basics of HTML coding and figuring out how to make a table you know, display on a website that my dad could visit from his computer somewhere else instead of just locally on my machine was the foundation for where I got started. And then it's drastically shifted around ever since. But that skill set is 100% necessary for what I do today and applies on a daily basis in this pack in the sense that the web design took me to email marketing. The email marketing required web design at the time because we had to format the emails to fit on desktop devices, laptop devices, mobile devices. And then that started leading into some of the WYSIWYG editors that are out there and figuring out whether or not they were actually worth it. At the time they weren't, now they are. And then that went further into some of the uh, Facebook advertising and the Google advertising and utilizing different URL structures for tracking, things like that. To answer your question a little bit more specifically, when we were starting the Super Pack, we needed to get a domain which was very easy for me to do because I've already bought a domain for outside ROI. I've set everything up on there. We needed to get uh, hosting, which we did through ClickFunnels. We actually started our first page on ClickFunnels. Uh, and then we, we expanded into Shopify when we got the products created. So then we needed to link those two and create what's called a subdomain. So the shop.greennewdealalliance.org is the sub, the shop dot is the subdomain for that. So we had to set that up. Um, we had to set up the bank accounts that are completely digital. We've got a, a donation site that actually is a software of its own that we had to then link into the donation accounts. Then we had everything communication-wise and backend-wise that we set up in a project management tool called Teamwork, where we have all of our communication, all of our file history, all of our tasks, anything that we need to check off. We've got all of our Google Docs and Google Drive structure. So instead of using anything like Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint, we use everything in Google Drive where we can collaborate on it all at the same time, uh, no matter where we are. Sounds like you're running a super PAC like a marketing agency. It's, it's <laughs> very, very similar. That's sweet, man. So building off of that, do you want to chat about like the progression of this super PAC? You know, how you guys started it on social media and how it's grown and the process that you've used to kind of learn um, what's working and, and can, you know, use that to grow into a profitable super PAC in a very short period of time? Yeah, totally. So being in the industry for so long, we've tried to limit what we're actually like focused on day to day. So instead of doing everything at once, instead of building our entire Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and audio and website and everything else and getting distracted and getting pulled in so many directions, uh, our primary focus was get a website and get a Facebook page uh, and then start creating content, see where that took us. You know, we didn't need to repurpose all of the content across every platform if it wasn't interesting to people. So what we all agreed on originally was to set pretty strict boundaries. We were going to talk about a handful of items, climate change, deforestation, plastic use, animal extinction, fossil fuels, and student loans. We were going to launch those on Facebook, and we were going to use Facebook to gauge the interest. If people were interested, if there were conversations happening, we would expand on that. We would continue to post articles in that uh, topic, around that topic. So once we got there... And we started to get a few page likes. I think from zero to about 3,000 page likes, we got a lot of pushback where people were like, who are you guys? What are you doing? You don't, you're not relevant. Once we crossed over the 3,000 page likes boundary, that stopped. And I, I, it was a little bit new to me. I didn't expect all the pushback originally, and I didn't expect it to just stop overnight. Uh, I, I don't think that people look at the page and see a 3,000 number, and they're like, oh, I can't push back anymore. I just think there was a social proof and a credibility angle that people saw with that number of likes with the conversations and with the number of posts that we had at that point that they they stopped. So once we got you know up over a couple thousand likes, once we started seeing the interest, we expanded on the website. 
and we started creating dedicated pages for each topic that people uh, that people were super interested in. We wound up building 13 custom landing pages. Uh, eight of them failed. So we knew that we were going to build a lot of content. We were going to build a lot of pages and put a lot of effort into things that were not going to produce results. And we were excited about that because every time we fail, we learn which direction to go in. So we had five really well converting landing pages that we were able to duplicate, iterate, and test a new one, um, which we're still doing today. Uh, in doing that, we've put together a process that we're using. So we've create a landing page and put some content in it. I'm the person that's responsible for that. So I, I build the landing page, I put some content in, I find an image, I put an image on, and then I send it to the other team members and I have them critique the heck out of it. So they go through, they, they tweak the copy, they edit it, they pull in some other details, they might change the image, things like that. Then we send it over to a copywriter that we have. Uh, the copywriter fine tunes everything, edits the copy for the page that we have then creates ads around that, that we can then push out to the, uh, the masses on Facebook. Once we find interest there, then we convert that into a Google ad. And the Google ad is where we see most of our conversions come from because we're, we're gauging the interest on Facebook, we're gauging the search volume on Google and then uh, taking that into conversions. No, that's awesome, man. That's like a data-driven approach to collecting money to save the planet. That's, that's, that's actually a really good way to put it. We should take that and put it in a tagline on the site, Bryce. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I, I, I fucking love it, man. It's awesome. So it's, it's been really fun, honestly. It's been eye-opening to me. Um, one of the biggest differences in this business versus outside ROI, and I believe what you see in Major Impact Media, is when you own it, it's... A, a whole different process. You know, you're for the advertising agency style, you're taking other people's businesses and other people's money and doing the best that you can with it to get the results that they're geared towards, but you don't have full insight into the business because it's not yours. With uh, the Green New Deal Alliance, what we're able to see is 100% transparency in the business. So we're very engaged in the feedback, we're very engaged in every level of this testing process. And given the skill sets of the three people that are running it, it's been, we've been able to iterate and we've been able to optimize very quickly uh, over the last just 68 days that we've been running. Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. I love it. And just 68, so you guys are profitable after 68 days. Yep. 68 days, we've got, uh, I think I said 9,776 page likes. Uh, just dividing that out, it's about 143 likes a day, which is, we've got 100 as our goal, so we're exceeding that. We've got just under 100 donations that's brought back all of our ad spend, which is fantastic. We've got 13 custom landing pages built out. Yeah, well, I love that mindset, you know, that every failure is one step closer to knowing what works. That's such a valuable way to look at things, especially when you're doing stuff online. It's just, that's, I mean, that's, that's how it is, you know, like taking steps, moving forward and if failure is not failure, failure, failure is learning. Yeah. So I've worked with quite a few people that it was very difficult to, for them to understand that, you know, you put a lot of work into building out these pages and these lead magnets and these uh, topics that you think people are going to be interested in. And when you find out that they're not, it, it is disappointing. Like everyone's going to be disappointed, but the best thing that you can do from that is change direction and start something else immediately. Yeah. There, there's a lot of people out there that get so hung up on tweaking, you know, a color or something different. That's not necessarily the point of, of the topic that's failing. You know, it's hard to measure that sometimes, but when you are able to, to recognize that and iterate quickly, that's when you find success uh, very fast. This, this, project in particular was a really fun one for me because it was a exam it was a time that I could practice what I preach take everything that I explain to people on a daily basis in my uh, day job if you will and then put that into practice for something that I'm actually passionate about for I'm in, actually in control of and try and maintain the emotional level that I tell people like don't be too attached to it because if it fails we're going to scrap it and go to the next one you know, so here I'm putting in that time and then when it does fail, it's like, all right, now this is the time you own up and, and continue moving on. So, yep, no, definitely, man. Um, I, I relate to you a lot on that mindset and it's always really great to work with people who, who feel the same. So to wrap it up, man, if, if somebody listening to this wanted to go about 
you know, maybe starting their own super PAC or taking their time and pushing it towards um, something they care about, you know, where would they get started? What could, what could they do to, to try something like this out? Great question, Bryce. The first thing that I would say is write down the things that you're passionate about. Uh, it's going to take a lot of motivation. It's going to take a lot of oomph in your writing and in your responses to people to really get them to buy in and believe what it is that you're saying. You're, go you're also going to have to have a lot of knowledge around what it is. So people are asking us questions every day on topics that we're relatively knowledgeable about, but still have a little bit of gray area that we'll have to go out and research and just put that time into to make sure that we're answering them. So you've got to have the drive behind you to do that. Uh, the second thing is research this space. Find out if there's anybody else doing it. Find out if it's going to be a, a easy journey or just what you're up against by knowing who's out there doing that already. Um, if there's three other super PACs doing the exact same thing, then we have limited resources as to who we can tap for donations and support and conversations. So we did a lot of research in the industry. Uh, the third thing is start a business. You've got to, in order to start a super PAC, you have to have a corporation or an LLC of some sort. So start that, pick a name, file some paperwork, pick a state that you want to be registered in. Uh, and then after you have that file with the Federal Election Commission or the FEC, and I personally recommend finding a partner or a mentor. Um, I don't think I could do this on my own. I definitely could not do it on my own along with outside ROI. So having two other people here to bounce ideas off of and meet with and split up the tasks has been uh, extremely comforting in this instance. So, Dude, that's awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for sharing you know, your experience and your journey launching a super PAC. And thanks for taking time out of your day to do something, you know, that actually helps uh, the people on this planet. So that's always super <laughs> rad as well. You know, thanks for me and I'm sure lots of other people. Yeah. So if anyone has questions for Mike, wants to chat about this, you can definitely find them on social media. Mike, what's the best way to find you on, on the socials? Yeah. So just send us a message at Green New Deal Alliance Facebook page. It's very easy to find. It's facebook.com slash Green New Deal Alliance. Perfect. And uh, yeah, you can also reach out to us uh, here on the podcast. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please be sure to, you know, subscribe, leave us a review on iTunes. I hear that's really good for podcasts these days. So we would appreciate that. Yeah, we'll be tuning in for the next episode where we'll talk about more cool stories about building, you know, building stuff online. That's all I got for today. Mike, thanks again for sharing your story with us and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Bryce.